welcome back guys to another battle style video with me Scarander. This is episode 2 of 8. So many of you guys actually asked me during my first video about battle styles that you wanted to know what the trickster was so you have never heard of it and what the basic premise is. And you know I'm going to do a little recap on the trickster and what differentiates from the blocker. The basic premise is basically that while the blocker player is all about shutting down sweepers, the trickster player is all about shutting down stallers. So basically this is what you will become if you're just getting really tired of the stall game meta game. So yeah, so basically a great way of being around for as many turns, but you don't rely on blocking, but rather rely on the blockers not being around. A great example of this is putting up hazards, being able to keep those hazards around and also being able to go for toxic plays and pretty much, you know, scouting the whole team and, you know, finding out the basic premise. So this playstyle is rather complex. It's hard to do, right? A few players does this really well. I'm going to, you know, do a review about the player that probably does this the best and that's going to be Dundeel, you know, Dundeel Showdown. So make sure to check that channel if you want to find out more about how to do it. But let's now actually get to the pros and cons about this battle stall. So before we go into the pros and cons, we actually need to know how the team build is. The team build is basically two supporters. The supporters are being heal bellers, rapid spinner, defoggers. They usually very well build defensively to be around, to not fall into like bullshit in the late game, because this is actually what the team is all about. And other than that, they usually have one offensive sweeper and one specially offensive sweeper to be able to late game sweep pretty good and also two defensive cores and defensive cores can be with hazards and they can also use attacks like toxic will wisp shutting down opponents so the basic premise is pretty much you know to get the best overview about your opponent the overview is basically what i mean what you know which pokemon are what that will be that you know which one is the sweeper, which one is the special with the attacking sweeper, even the cores, maybe which one is the rapid spinner, defogger, toxic staller, etc. Trickster player are great at finding this one out. They usually don't try to, uh, you know, getting offensively like anytime soon. They usually go for the check plays. That is, they rather exchange rocks than be able to block it. It's a really cool display to watch because. The reason they do that is because they know they have the more defensive team to stay around than their opponent oftenly. So that basically means that they don't mind going for a late game defog or rapid spin because they have nothing to fear as much as their opponent. Other than that, and it's worth mentioning, is that they are very good at pinpointing individual threats. That is, that they often have one or two posts that could actually threaten the core of their game gameplay or battle style. So that means that they're going to try to pressure play you to switch in these type of pokes only to switch out their own counter against you. So yeah, really, really threatening and really, really hard actually to get accustomed to because tricks to play, like I said, there are often very defensive, can be around for a long time. So they can do this a lot of time without really need to worry about anything. And you can't really like win against them with, you know, offensive play styles because they will just will wisp and, you know, baiting you to do the wrong moves. They, like I said, they don't mind being around for many turns because they know exactly what you're trying to do and they have the defensive core and play style to be around to actually make you do the mistake. So trickster play style is usually all about the opponent makes the mistake while they just stay around and watch you falter and, well, whittle and die, basically. They are great at baiting and baiting is basically the leave a Pokemon out, you know, to make you do a switch in that they want to see, only get the free rocks up or, you know, get in the late game, toxic, whatever. They are good at this, like really, really good at this. And it's very, very, very annoying. And, you know, there only are a few like cons to this team <laughs> that is worth mentioning. Um, basically, it is, they have a huge problem. Um, that is that they can't really sweep until the late game. They actually need the opponent to be somewhat whittled down throughout the game, you know, getting the stealth rock damage and stuff like that, and getting like ship damage easily, um, so they can sweep around 25 turns. That is usually when this, this team actually starts, you know, build up to become a real threat. That is that while another team, like say of an offensive team, is at the best between 15 and 20 turns to hinder while this team is usually like i said works around 25 turns and plus they only get stronger and stronger with each turn 
So the late game sweep is a problem, but if they're around for it, then they are definitely going to win that stall out. And they also have problems against regional sets. What I mean by that is that they use stuff that isn't conventional, because they will pretty much frustrate them from their scouting, because they don't know which Pokemon is what early on, and it takes a lot longer to find out, which means that they prolong their turns to actually function properly. A good way of actually being that could be, you know, I have used this, <laughs> like, like I said, slacking, special offensive slacking. It is something that, you know, people aren't <laughs> expecting, and they can actually make sure that the course of um, the trickster player is lost very early on. Don't worry, they can stay along, stay uh, stay around for a lot longer than that, but that is a hinder that is worth mentioning. And also, scouting too long is actually a problem. Scouting is basically, like I said, that you're finding out which Pokemon are what. And if you do that for too long, uh, their opponent can actually start seeing what you are doing and pretty much, you know, start building and setting up. Um, Tricks to play has a lot of trouble against players that are good at predictions. So if they find out what the Tricks to player is all about, they can actually counter it rather hard and actually deal with it rather effortlessly and easily take it out before these 25 turns has gone. Um, Shake place is something that is good. I do recommend it, but it also means that you don't get the early lead. And uh, the reason why the early lead is Im very important is because you can start pressure playing. If a trickster player doesn't get the early lead like 20 to 15 turns in, they usually are in a backup plan with a need to just stall out to turn things around for these 25 plus turns. So that is a thing worth mentioning. And other than that, I mean, there is really nothing that is, how to put it, that is basically bad with the Trickster team because they are much capable than most other teams to be around for a long time and face off pretty much every threat. Uh, so like I said, the only thing that going against is, that is somewhat of a hard counter is good predictive players. But that's about it. I mean, these type of players are really, really good and you should really watch out for them. And don't try to uh, go offensive against them because they will beat you up. They will beat you up to a bloody pulp. I'm not even kidding. So now that we talked about what the premise of the trickster player is, let's actually get into the player that I think represent this play style the absolute best. I'm not even kidding about that. And that is Victor, other known as Dundeal Showdown. And yes, I love this picture <laughs> so much. So yeah, now that you guys know about what the Trickster player is all about, I'm actually going to talk a little more about what Dun Deal is all about. You know, he's one of the best Trickster players that I've seen on YouTube. That doesn't mean that it has only Trickster. Uh, as Pimp Knights, as I had in my previous review, uh, they have a good other like qualities that they have been keeping up with, you know, being better than the average player. Uh, I give him an A on Trickster player, obviously, because he is, like I said, probably the best one. He doesn't rely on it. Um, while he's great at scouting, uh, he usually don't need to actually be able to do late game sweep. He's actually much more aggressive than that, and that is why I've given him a duelist B. Uh, that is basically that, you know, the predictive players, that probably is his greatest weakness. He actually developed a playstyle to, uh, you know, go in hand in hand with those type of playstyles. What I mean with duelist is that he's using unconventional stuff against the predictive players to throw them off guard, to be able to actually stay around much longer than average players. So he's really good at that. Watch the fuck out. <laughs> Not even kidding. And also I give him a C on the Guardian playstyle because his defensive cores are much more built uh, to the scouting premise, which is Trickster ability. That is that uh, the Guardian playstyle is much more about recovering, staying around, you know, scouting in another way and preserving posts. He's very good at preserving every team members of his group. Plus that the Guardian playstyle is basically based on the player that overpredicts and overthinks. This is actually a great perk for his type of playstyle because that means that he can see what the opponent wants to do even though he hasn't found out the whole team. So like I said, watch out for Dundeal because he is a beast in battle. And you know, he is so aggressive sometimes that 
I'm surprised he works so well that he does, but is a reason he plays in the higher tiers, and that is because he basically shuts down every common threat in both OU and UU, and I would really like to see these guys doing NU stuff, but I know he's somewhat frustrating over it, and that is because it is somewhat too slow for his playstyle. And I plus think it's somewhat of a waste of a time, consider he's doing so well in the higher tiers than a lot of lower tier player has trouble with. And that's go hand in hand with his playstyle that is, you know, being able to block whatever comes in and actually knowing exactly what they want to do and shut them down and defeat them without any problems. So make sure to check him out. I'm going to do a little stat calculation here on what I think his main attacking perks are. So we start off with his offensive pressure, and I'm going to give that a B. Uh, while giving that a B is because of his playstyle alone. Uh, but consider he's actually one of the best players around here on YouTube to actually scout out a player and finding out what they're all about with his scouting abilities. That means that he doesn't need actually to be that much offensive. He still have a rather high stats for that. That means that he's hit hard when he needs to and know when he can do a good check play. Uh, he's all about check plays. You know, he is usually just going full offensive, 20 turns in. You know, just sweeping really good, actually. Uh, I'm also going to give his defensive capabilities an A. His team are usually based on, you know, being able to block every common counter for, you know, his type of playstyle. It's, it's an amazing display, really, because he usually don't bring too many defensive pokes, but he builds them defensive. Like, the latest uh, video, while I'm doing this video, he actually has, has a Neuven that is defensive and has been working really well. And it's because it is unconventional, but it works It works amazingly, really, because the people are bringing the wrong counter for it. So he, is, has, he has that thought process. He knows what has to be defensive. He also knows what needs to stay around. And then we come into his sack play. Um, he's probably one of the best one around. Um, he usually never sack a poke. Um, he wants to have all his team members around. That has come hand in hand with his guardian playstyle. Um, sack play is something that you should use on and oftenly because you do want to have a safe switch in. But if you're good at predicting and good at um, preserving pokes, then you don't need to. Uh, so he usually loses a poke 20 turns in, and that is when an opponent have four to three pokes left, and it doesn't really matter. So he knows exactly which poke to sack, and he also know that he doesn't need to sack anything. And that comes to his surprise ability, so that is the element of surprise. Um, he usually, you know, he has regional sets on his poke that should work as a conventional stuff, but it has the element of surprise basically to, you know, force switch Pokemon. Um, he does this really, really well and very, very offensively, actually. I can't see how many times I've seen him bring in, you know, a direct counter only to throw up stealth rocks instead of actually attacking. So, he's very good at surprising the opponent, he's also very good at using pokes that aren't conventional. Uh, and that comes in hand in hand with his originality. That is like, for example, that, that was the Neuven. That is, he's using pokes that you aren't expecting being defensive. So, he is also very good at bringing pokes that aren't supposed to be offensive to actually build up to be offensive. So, he... You know what? I can't really give this guy much more credit than giving him a total of an A. And that is basically because he has a hard time even remote because he got all the opponent tactics down he usually got all the team build up down so when he's up to against an opponent he usually just need five to ten turns to know exactly what the opponent wants to do and you know render those <laughs> playstyles useless so it's an amazing display i definitely recommend most of you guys to watch this guy because if you have a problem against preserving pokemon this is the guy you should watch to you know learn how to counter well, usually block players, because he can take down a defensive Pokemon without much hassle. He knows exactly what he wants to do and just shut it down. It is an amazing display, and I can't really like give these guys much more credit. If you want to find out how to preserve Pokemon, Dundeal is your guy, because he is one of the most complex thought-out thought processes when it comes to battle. And what I mean by that is that he has you know, nailed down pretty much every tactic that could be going against him. He has an amazing way of actually using the opponent's perk against his team to be his worst enemy. That is that he can render Pokemon useless very oftenly without actually even trying. He knows exactly which one to pinpoint is the threat and just try to render that one useless and done deal use, do, does this effortlessly. So uh, yeah, that will actually be all. I can't really like give you guys much more information about Dundeal, you guys really need to check him out and find out how to play like him because if you really want to be good at this game and being able to stay around for a lot longer than the usual game, this is the guy you want to watch. 
I'm not kidding. Uh, so that will be all for episode 2. The episode 3 is going to be about the predicted player, and I'm going to be more in focus with the Phoenix Master 1. So stay tuned for that episode, I'll be releasing that on Sunday. So thank you all for watching, as always, and don't forget to leave a like. <laughs> and on that, guys, have a good day, and uh, bye.